and love, family. Peace and love. It's your boy Chris and Light and coming back again with some more spiritual fiddles. And today I'm going in on my spiritual journey. Ooh, this is a good one, family. This is a good one. My spiritual journey. Ooh, I get a lot of emails, a lot of phone calls, a lot of messages. And um, during my consultations, everyone always asks me about my spiritual journey. And I'm quick to say this calls about you. You don't want to hear about me because it's going to take an hour. It's going to take an hour. But I'm going to shorten this video up and just give you a summary of my spiritual journey. First off, everything in your life is spiritual. The good, the bad, birth, everything in your life is spiritual. So no matter what you've been through, you've been on your spiritual journey. You don't start your spiritual journey when you start to, when you decide to read spiritual books. Your spiritual journey started as soon as you took your first breath. That's when your earthly spiritual journey occurred this time. Your spiritual journey follows you through all your incarnations. So if you have a lot of good luck, good karma in this lifetime, in your previous life, you did a lot of good things, so you it will allow you to have good karma in this lifetime. So your spiritual journey starts when you took your first breath when you were incarnated. But I don't want to, I don't want you to think that, oh, I'm having I'm scratching and surviving, I'm having a lot of bad luck, that you was a bad person in your last life. You could have had a thousand good lives and you want to experience a life full of challenges so you can grow a little bit, so you can evolve. So it doesn't mean that you were a bad person or anything like that. Everything in your life was your choice. You signed up for it. So don't look at it as something bad. Look at it as challenges that help you evolve. But back to me, my spiritual journey started in the hood. I remember when I was five years old, my father said he was going to come get me. I was all packed, and I was going to stay with them in Florida for like that summer. And he never did show. And there was something in, my, in the mind of my consciousness at five years old that made me say, the heck with my father, he's dead to me. And that's how I felt from five years old, because I, I felt this burning desire to be with him, and I couldn't understand why he didn't want to be with me. So that sparked my spiritual hate journey, where I was literally hating my father and, until we linked up again when I was 23. I was hating him. And I let him know every time I seen him that, hey, or, or well, not seen him, but when I heard his voice on the phone, I let him know I don't want to have nothing to do with you. But when I became a father, I started to think like, you know what? I got to let that pain go. I can't keep anchoring my consciousness in that time period that no longer exists. It's, it's preventing me from usurping my primordial light, and it's not allowing him to heal as well. And I had a daughter, too, and I wanted my daughter to know another man other than me. Because, unfortunately, my wife nor I had my father, our fathers in our lives like that. So I made a spiritual decision to say, you know what, let me give my father a chance and, you know, when he got older, he matured and he was a good father, a good grandfather to my daughter. So on that note, we were winning. But I remember back when I was 23 years old, I was a young father scratching and surviving, just trying to make ends meet, working mediocre jobs, not making money. And I started reading slave narratives. And I really started reading firsthand accounts of the atro atrocities that they had experienced. And I'm here worried about financial issues, and they were going through the changes and trials that they were going through. And it made me realize that what I was going through was really nothing. It seemed like everything to me because I was enduring it. But putting myself in someone else's shoes made me realize that there's more to life out there than just being mad and hateful. So I had to learn to let all that hate go, you know, because I was like, burn the man, I can't stand these people and all this good stuff. But I realized the more I learned about my history, the more I was getting upset. And I was like, okay, I'm learning about all these things that are outside of me. Yes, my flesh is connected to those issues. But as I began to grow spiritually, I, I began to realize that I've been all races. I've been white, Chinese, black. I've had dreams of being different races. So why am I tying my consciousness and my anger to just one aspect of who I am? Because I then began to realize that there's only souls. There's good souls, there's light souls, there's demonic souls, there's God souls, angelic souls, fairy souls. There's only souls. And because of your color, it shouldn't matter. That shouldn't dictate how I'm going to treat you, you know? 
But anyway, after I dropped all the hate, I started to look within. I started learning divine prayers. I started tapping into Hinduism, Buddhism, Buddhism. I started tapping into all these things that embrace love. And when I found my master, Dr. Mitchell Gibson, it just changed my life. He, he, I, can't, I can't express enough how much he changed my life. I started learning about magic. I started learning about the power within myself. I started to claim my divinity. I started investing in real spiritual tools of power. And I started to see myself as a real spiritual being. And I'll say, well, as I was following him for like four years, he introduced me to solar practices, solar techniques for his breathing techniques, um, things to get the sun to respond to you. And once the sun responded to me and started blinking in the sky, I became a divine conscious soul. And after that happened, it was just something clicked in me. I said, you know what? I got to help all mankind. I started writing books. I started my YouTube page. And I just started helping people, paying for groceries, food, gas. I, everything I'm do is like I'm a beacon of light. And that's where I'm at now. I'm in my beacon of light stage where I have amassed all this information that helped me out. And I want to divulge it to the public in hopes that you guys take an inkling of what I'm talking about and, and, and change your life. Like I said, I'm from the hood, man. I'm from the hood, man. I'm doing better now than I ever have in my life. Most of my friends dead in jail. You know what I'm saying? So if I can make it, if I can make it from where I come from, you can make it from wherever you come from. I had to change my mindset up, though, family. That's why I wrote Poverty Consciousness, to make you aware of where you're at consciously. Wealth consciousness. So you can usurp your divine primordial light and start making that guap, start making that money. Dissolving your limitations for those who didn't read Poverty Consciousness, for those who thought wealth consciousness was too challenging to read, I created Dissolving Your Limitations so you can dissolve your limitations. Because I know a lot of people fight for their limitations, and when you fight for your limitations, you get to keep them. I had to realize that I needed to make my will to succeed stronger than my need to fail. I had to make my will to succeed stronger than my need to fail. Once I did that, everything started to blossom for me. There was no second place. Everything's winning. I created my own closing statement, winning. It's a closing statement. When I say winning, you know what it is. You know winning don't mean losing. Winning don't mean second place. Winning means everything. And that's my mantra that I chose to use. And that's the part of my spiritual journey that I'm on right now. I'm in my winning phase. And I don't think this phase is ever going to end. Matter of fact, I know it's not going to end. Because when I, I don't think I know. You know what I mean? When you develop your no system, no one can take that up. To, no one can take away what you know. They just can't because you know. You know what I'm saying? They can take away what you believe, but not what you know. Not what you know. So when you know you're a winner, I don't care what anyone brings to you. You can either take it in or have selective memory like I do and just cast it away because you're a winner. So I hope that sheds some light on my spiritual journey, where I've been, where I come from. It was much more than that. But if you go out and get my books, you'll be able to read my real spiritual journey and how I became the Chris Enlightened that you see today. So on that note, family, peace and love. Everyone that supported me on my YouTube page, I appreciate you guys. Everyone that's bought my book, I appreciate you guys. Every one of you guys who left a comment on my video, took the time out your day to say I liked your video. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. If there's anything you want me to talk about, shoot me an email. Shoot me. I'm getting a lot of emails about topics and things like that. So it'll be, I, it will be, I, let's just say this. Put a message underneath this video about what you want me to talk about, and I will. Because this, 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 this page is about you guys. It's not about me. It's about you guys. If there's anything I can help you out with, I'm here for you. Just let me know, okay, family? So on that note, peace and love. You already know what we're doing. We out here winning. <laughs>